All right, Mark, thank you for staying with me. These, this has been one of the, the my good conversations. Um, you know, I, I think, I try to think big picture and I'm like, I don't know where it's going. And it's one of those things when you have your head down and it's like the artist, when you're painting this picture, you don't know what's gonna come out the other side. That's right. I always say, I learned in broadcasting, just follow the conversation, just follow it. Wherever it meanders, just let it go. You know, don't, don't try to rein it in too much. Unless of course the person is totally getting off on some wild tangent, but even those could be interesting, you know? So I always say, let just let it go. It's, it's uh, you know, conversation is not meant to be, you know, uh, outlined like in a paper, you know, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it is fun talking about these things. How many, I mean, again, how many times do any of us really talk like this anymore? And that's it, creating that safe space for the conversation. And here's the thing, right? You have this safe space here. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, this segment is a, a lot about next steps. The, one of the next steps is I'm gonna start meetups in New York. So I'm doing meetups right. in Princeton as well, but you know, I'm not saying everyone come to Princeton. The idea is, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be, mind coming to Princeton. I, I no, I, I'm definitely doing meetups <laughs> here, but I'm I'm also gonna do meetups in New York, you know, and we'll we'll have these little pockets and you know again. So the safe space from the podcast, creating that in real time. And I'm gonna invite my other guests, and obviously they can bring whoever they want, and it's a vibe. Cool. That's... And um, like we said, you know, you, you want to spread that and have that be contagious. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's um, yeah. Definitely down with that. It sounds it's again, it goes back to what you did, you know, in, in the running community, you know, um, bringing this misfit group of people together. By the way, I still talk to so many members of the, of the group. Uh, to this day, you know, um, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how yeah, it's supposed yeah. to be. We just, it's, we just have a, yeah. We, yeah. I, I want to, I definitely want to continue the Runners United. I know um, we have to get it. We have to get things uh, rock and rolling. I'm telling you, it's, uh, you know, I may be, I'm a year older and I'm like a 10, 20 pounds heavier. I think after <laughs> after COVID, you we know? all we all are. We have to get back and little oh, by little. Please. Yeah, I know. The, the weight struggle is, is real, you know. I'm thinking of doing um nine plus one this year. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking of either doing nine plus one or uh doing the charity thing for 2022, you know, running again. I, I took this year off. You did not, which I congratulate you for, by the way. You you I I saw your finish line stuff and um uh, yeah, I'm looking to do 20. I'm hoping to do 2022. One way, well, obviously it'd be 2023 if I do nine plus one. In case people don't know nine plus one, you have to do nine uh, eligible races and one volunteer event in a well, calendar year. And that automatically gets you into the marathon for the following calendar year. So that's right. Uh, that's right. No, I, I definitely want to do it. So if I can get all my ducks in a row, you know, I have to kind of consolidate my time. So like, if I'm going to make nine trips to New York, then these events that I'm talking about are probably going to be on that same day. So then I can kind of, you know, so it's like grouping my, my, you know, and then I have, you know, all of the lo logistics. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's hard when you're not in the, at the core of where you used to be and where these things are happening, you kind of have to say maybe with hiking. I don't hike in New York City, obviously. I have to arrange to travel to the Catskills or the Adirondacks on days I have off or weekends. Yeah, you have to kind of plan things out. Yeah. Um, so, so one of the things with the discernment and choosing what to focus on and what to block out, I don't get drawn into a lot of pol political stuff. And I, I don't recommend that for everyone. I think we need... If you ask me, elect, so here's my thing, okay? I, I have a clear vision of how we're going to get out of this huge hole we're in. And, and it's going to take a bold reimagining. This is like my catchphrase now. 
Mm -hmm. Good it, it, you, it has to be bold. It's not going to be this kind of, well, I voted kind of thing. You can't rely on the people in office like, oh, so-and-so is now in office and he's got. We've learned that that doesn't work. Yeah, even the best of the best with the best intention and their best words, there's going to be this bipartisan whatever and, and oh, they didn't have the Senate, they, you know, they didn't have the, it's not going to get done. No. It's going to require the people to do this thing, you know. So what I was saying before is that I think we need to have some independent people, you know, who, who we pay to just figure things out to, to stay on top of politicians, like consistently, like organize it for us, you know? And I guess technically that's what a journalist should be doing. <laughs> yeah, the news media would be a great place to start if we can get, if honestly, honestly, if we can get rid of uh, a lot of these, you know. But don't get me wrong. Yeah, so we have, to, it would have to be like a nonprofit. You know, yeah. you take about 500 people, say you're now a nonprofit, you know, you, you can't take money from anyone. Here is your salary, $100,000. We want you to be comfortable. And it's your job to cover every politician on every local level all the way up and to just kind of chart it out for us. And we really need to sit down and like, we shouldn't be going back and forth about, about abortion anymore. That should be like a done, like we've solved that. It's a done deal. It is what it is. It shouldn't be something that's being overturned and we're, there's a new law. And that's the kind of thing that keeps us distracted going back and forth. And divided. Yeah. And divided. You know, and, and so so I'm all about every all of the topics, having those on top uncomfortable conversations. But once we have them and we decide and we hashed it out, there's no going back. We have to really put put it in writing. You know, I think like gay people should get married if they want. Like leave them alone, you know, whatever. And and these people who are saying, well. You know, marriage is between a man. Like, stop it. You just create. I mean, think about it. Wake, wake up in the. Ask yourself this question. You wake up in the morning. You know, whose life is impacting you? And when you wake up every morning, no one's. The, the people that are in your house, they're impacting you because they're the kids are crying or there's they want. You know, your wife is. You know, whatever's going on. Yes, outside of your little nucleus there, who cares what other people are doing? I mean. And we need to have that like in writing. I think we have to, you know, make sure that the constitution says that everyone gets their rights. And we have to get, we have to adjust what we're doing in other countries because after you bankrupt the country's resources, guess where the people from that country want to go? Yeah. They want to leave that country and they want to come here, right? right. And we, then we turn, turn them away at the, at the border. So yeah. then it turns into another thing. So we it's, have to. It's a vicious cycle, Lexi. It just it it never it never stops. And history keeps on giving us lessons about what not to do. Yet we keep on repeating the same things over and over. This express, you know, how could you keep on doing the same thing and expect different results? Right. It, it's 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 this horrible cycle. And the reason why is because, again, they. <laughs> If you keep people divided, you keep them, you know, combating each other, keep them poor, very important, keep them poor and un uneducated because you don't want an educated populace. Once everyone's educated, the game is up, right? And that's so, it. So, so here's the thing. You can't go to Venezuela and take their oil. You can't go to these countries and do these things like, oh, we're going to, you can't. Because it's going to create a problem. You, if, if Venezuela has oil, you need to give them the resources to develop their oil, give them the infrastructure so Venezuela can be its own independent country. That's I, would, I would, yeah, I would like to see what you mentioned before about education. I would like to see a, some of the money that we spend on defense reallocated towards education in this country. That would be a very wonderful thing I'd love to see. 
you know that like you're really, saying I, I you you kind of you kind of made my point right you just said that they don't there's an intentional effort to not have everyone get the education that they could you don't want them to be you don't want them to be educated we we spend trillions on on weapons but we won't spend it on education and the thing is, here's the thing about the pandemic that I talk about is, you know, people say, well, we don't have the money, the budget, the budget, but the pandemic comes, you create the money out of nowhere. If you can give, you know, $50 trillion in a stimulus, you could put that stimulus into education. That's the real stimulus we need. Yeah. And, and the thing is, the politicians are not going to do it unless we're marching like this is the 70s. And I think that's the only way to make them do it. Well, that's the thing. You know, going back to um, you know the old school ways, you know the way it used to be. Yeah, I mean there was the, the people were really out there doing their thing. I'm not saying people aren't doing it now; they certainly are. But as a general rule, none of us are out there, you know, pounding the pavement at the White House. You know, I've done I've done several protests myself in Washington, but I don't see a majority. Of people really raising their voices against against this, right? So and yeah, that's, we just mm -hmm. that's what that's what we're talking about, and that's what has to shift. Hey, yeah. I can't come in. I'm taking a week off. I'm going down to D.C. Right, and it's not just my issues. I'm mm -hmm. taking on the issues of what's right, so that right. we can fix America. Right, and again, uh, going back to what I said before. Got to get, got to have the intellectual curiosity. You have to want to learn. You have to want to hear all sides. You have to be able to discern what's factual and what's not. Very important, you know. <laughs> None of this fake news stuff. And um, and yeah, and just reignite that passion in our in our country again. This country has the potential to be everything it it claims to be, right? It has that. We have the foundation for it. A lot of countries don't even have the foundation for it. We do, right. but we're squandering at every turn the opportunity to make us the greatest place on planet Earth. So, because so here's the worst case scenario, right? I've had this conversation where I'm like, well, if what's going to happen if we keep going? Because it's it's to me this is there was a point when I was naive and I said at some point the powers that be has to say if you keep pulling out the resources of America and bankrupting the children and blah, 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 filling up prisons and da, da, da. eventually we're gonna hit rock bottom. And then I'm saying, so, so my naive thought was, these people have to at least care that you don't want to have a, you don't wanna have America be number 15. <laughs> on on the you know what I mean? It does, like, yet we are, yet we are in so many categories. That's oh yeah, yeah no right. I, so I know what you mean. The, the worst case scenario is America really like goes downhill. Well, look what happened in eighteen sixty in sixty one right sixty two sixty three four five right. I mean this the the, the country literally fractures apart right. It, it's neighbor against neighbor, brother against brother, sister against sister. I mean that's. That's not far-fetched. It's happened before. It's happened in other countries today, right? Uh, we're not that far removed from that. I know we like to think that we are, but, but we're not. Um, to me, again, the bottom line is we, we need to put all of the rhetoric aside. We need to stop listening to what talk radio is telling us. You know, We need to sit and say, I am going to intentionally spend a few hours studying this issue. I want to know everything there is to know about it from reliable sources. And you then know? go outside and have real conversations That's right. with That's people right. who disagree, right. meet your neighbors, right. and connect to real people. I That's think right. it's, I think it's less about knowing the I think it's less about knowing the issues and more about connecting with the people. Because right. I mean we have views on issues that like way over our heads you know we know more about the issues than we know the people in our neighborhood that's right yeah yeah i argue that we know people on television and on social media better than we know people in our own neighborhood that's true you know, at least you know you know it, it's um 
Yeah, we, we tend to know more about their lives than we really need to know. For example, you know, again, the drama part, right? Like so much of that drama. And I'm not saying you can't be caring for that person. I'm just saying that it, it's overload. And eventually you can no longer discern anymore what's good, bad, sad, glad, mad. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it all becomes Lose a touch. It just, yeah, you just lose total emotional connection to everything. And I think that's where we are right now. I think most Americans fall into one of two categories. They, they, they fall into the category of they want to be involved in every aspect of American life. They want to be loud. And, and then other people are just resigned. They're just resigned. They're like, it is what it is. It's going to be this way till I die. It's going to be this way for my kids. Nothing I can do about it. I'm just going to make money for me. And whatever happens, happens. You know, it's 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 unfortunate. It's it's um that's where we are. Um, but yeah, we have we have to turn that around. It's it is it is listen, I'm not gonna pretend for a second, Alexi, that that this could necessarily happen in our lifetime, right? I mean, this long-term change that we're talking it's big, about. It's a big ship. It's a lot to it's a lot to un, undo, right? It's you know, it's the genie out of the bottle thing. You gotta get the genie back in the bottle. It's it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot, and um, it may take generations to 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 correct this. Um, but yeah, if we I mean, I, the reality is, it, I, it here's the thing, right? If when I talk to most people, they talk about small change, and I think small change is a part of the problem. Like what you're saying is, this thing can take generations. But if we started, you know, like we were in the 70s and every celebrity got involved, it would shift in like six months. Well, it, things which I tell you when things will shift, things will shift in this country when the systems that previously worked to benefit a group of people, a certain sector of people, once those systems break down, all bets are off after that. You know, so once the, once the money train dries up, once the power dries up, once people become aware, educated, involved, active, engaged, right? And they start realizing what's really going on and, and how they're being manipulated. And, you know, once that's all gone, then the panic sets in. Not for us, we're like thrilled. Things are finally changing. It's gonna set in for the people that want us to be in this place where we are right now. Um, what does that mean? Because I think well, well there, there, there's there's definitely an interest in this country to maintain the status quo. You know, there 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 are people in this country who greatly benefit from the structures that are already in place, and they don't want anything to change. Why? Why would I? If I'm making you know five hundred billion dollars, why do I want anything to change? You know. Um, yeah, but you talk to the person living in Mississippi who's living, lived in poverty their whole life and they probably have a different opinion on, on change. They probably want a lot of change. But that's the thing also is that people tend to vote and tend to live their lives against their own best interest. And I, have, I have friends who have theories about that. They would rather see America go down than to see real equality. That's right. That you're absolutely. I mean, that you're absolutely right. I mean, that is the. They yes, they would. Even if it meant them living in poverty. Right. Yeah. I have a friend. I have to give her a shout out, Mariah. She's very like clear about this, and she's saying like they vote. You know, the the Republicans come and they scare you. You know, these people are going to come and take over your country. And then they give the Republicans the power and then the Republicans keep doing what they're doing. They keep the others going, the, the idea of the other going, but they're not necessarily helping you, but they're just giving you the reassurance that those people will stay in power and will make sure that we don't give them anything. We won't give you anything, but you can take peace in knowing that this is gonna remain white supremacy America. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I remember uh, on this topic, I remember clear as day, I was sitting, I forget who I was with, 
and they, a news story came across. It was about the 2010 census. And the news story was that they projected by 2040 that whites would no longer be the majority in the United States. And I remember hearing that story. And the first thing that popped in my mind is, oh my God, people are going to panic. There's going to be a revolt against that news. That cannot happen. Meaning I'm glad that it's gonna happen, but you know what I mean? It can't happen in this country. We cannot lose majority, right? I knew that that was gonna set into motion all kinds of panic. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing the after effects of that loss of control, that loss of power, because what's being lost in all this is that when everyone is equal, everyone wins, right? Like when everyone is self-sustaining and, and living a happy life, we all win. We all win. And, right? and that's the same kind of thing where people freaked out with Barack Obama being the president. That, that was another good example, by the way. Yes, that was another watershed moment. Definitely, I can't downplay that either. Well, but he was elected in what, 2009, I believe, right? Eight, yeah. Eight, and he took office in nine, right? And then the census news came out right after that, right? When they did, right. So that was a, a, a tidal wave of change that people- But here's, a, here's the thing about, you know, the us versus them is that it's not, it's not so much that the, the people, the powers that be, it's not like they're hoarding profits and then they are American, so it's not like these profits are staying in America. You know, what, what a lot, this is complicated and I want to spend some time on the podcast talking to economists because a lot of people don't understand that China invests in these companies. So when, when, when you think America's doing well, those profits don't stay in America. It's, it's a complicated kind of equation thing where you're like, oh, look, America made money, like, but the, these companies made money. When these right. companies make money, the money goes to people. And yeah. those people have no, no allegiance to America. Right. Those people aren't saying, oh, let me fix the school system. Let me fix, like you said, the transportation system. They don't care about that. They yeah. just come, they invest in Apple, they make the profits, they invest in Tesla, they make the profits and they're gone. Or they buy real estate. They, they, buy, the, they, they buy a huge penthouse you know, on top of right. a skyscraper and they have no interest in the neighborhood whatsoever. They couldn't care less what the neighborhood looks like. As long as their penthouse is, is nice, they can write off on their taxes, you know, bring money back home wherever they, yeah, it, it's, it's um, that's what I mean by, you know, up here, you know, it, it's, you know, most of us are down here, but, um, we're all in the same boat. I think, I think that's the message I want to give to everyone is, as I've learned in my life is that ultimately we're all in the same sinking boat, you know, we're all on the Titanic. Right. And, um, yeah, it's, it, it, if it, if it keeps on going this way, there's going to be no getting out of it. It's, it's going to be irreversible damage to our, our democracy and our country. Um, and I just hope that we. Um, Why aren't you more fired up? Me personally, yeah. Boy, that you know, it's like I, I feel like um, I should be. I feel like I've done so much in my life. You know, I feel like I've been at this for so long. Uh, I remember when I went to um, I, I marched on Washington for, against the Iraq War um, in in 1990, and um, they still went in. What's that? They still went in. They still did, of course. And then they went uh, back. I also was in Washington. I marched on Washington for Don't Ask, Don't Tell in the military against that provision that um, that was hurting our soldiers, right? So I've been, I feel like I've been active so for such a long time. Um, not to not to pass the baton, but I almost feel like it's up to some of the younger generations to take take up well, some. Here's of these. the thing. I agree with you. But I think we need we need people to say, hey, I've been at it. This is the way. This is this. This is this. Like, you need the soldiers and you need the generals. Yeah, that's true. So we need the generals for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, I mean, one, of, one of my things that I think personally holds me back is I wasn't born here. 
And when I say it holds me back, like I still do what I can, but if you ask me, I think my energy would be different if I was born here. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And I, and I, and, and I try to challenge myself, but there's so many stories of people who weren't born here, who's, I have a citizenship, but it's like, yeah, da, da, da. it can easily be, the narrative can easily be turned that like, oh, whatever, you know, kind of thing. So there's a lot of work to be done. I am very fired up, but I think I don't want, I don't want to, I want to preach to the choir. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to convert anyone. I just want to talk to the cry, choir. I want to figure out who, are you in the choir? Let's just make sure we know each other and just stay there. You know, yeah. um, I would love to organize a march, a rally, but not, not to make any kind of statement, like a love rally. Like we imagine oh, if yeah, we just yeah. shut down yeah. the street and just like, you know, People would be freaked out by that. That would be, that would be, yeah. That would be a great thing, but they would be so freaked out. What are you talking about, love? What? Yeah, what? like just some kind of positive vibes, like to like make sure we don't forget, you know, like yeah. when, you know, just to keep, keep the message out there and just to, we're not like marching against something we're not right. it's not like right. an anti-abortion rally because then it, right. it, it turns into something else you know yeah. it's just like a unity rally like everyone diversity just coming a diversity rally like celebrating america for what it is you know yeah it's like a fake holiday parade kind of thing <laughs> yeah exactly that's a parade i can get behind that's yeah just just like you know and so a big part of the thing too is I say like, um, imagine if all of the church leaders from the different denominations joined hands, joined arm, locked arms once a year in Washington. Like think about that visual. Right. All of the denominations, the Catholic, the Methodist, the Baptist, they all were there saying, you know, all the denominations saying, it doesn't matter your denomination, we're all one. And I think that's really missing from Christianity. Christianity yeah. started as a small group of people who were breaking away from the Jewish um, religion. Right. And little by little that grew and then the institution took it on and then it became this bigger thing. And then little by little it started breaking and it, it just, and now we're not, it, it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. And I get upset because a lot of denominations don't connect with other denominations. Yeah, it's, it's um, that's what I was going back to what I was saying before about spirituality and moral compass. I just think that, um, I think um, we've lost that. That's another part of this whole equation that we have to look very carefully at is, Churches have, and religious institutions have a huge influence on communities, huge. And they're um, not doing anything. They're passive. Well, yeah, I, you know, I think um, they're in the same battle we're all in. You know, they're losing uh, parishioners. They're losing members. I think that's why they're losing, because they're too quiet. They're not yeah, taking it stance. It could be. They, they're too quiet, but they also maybe, you know, in some cases too divisive for a lot of people's taste. They that's don't like the they're, they're quiet and divisive. I'll tell you a story, right? You, you said you, you know Trenton. So yes. one, one weekend morning, I don't remember, I don't know, maybe my wife was doing her nails or God knows what. We were down in Trenton and we drove past the abortion clinic. And there was like four white guys standing there. I don't think they had signs, but it was basically like a intimidating people who would try to go to get the, in there right yeah. and i've seen abortion places where there's like 40 people in front with big signs and they're like you know in your face if you're trying to go in there and i stopped the car i i just i felt a conviction that day and i i stopped the car and i said hey listen you standing here makes it harder for these people no one wants to have an abortion no one wants to do this like 
you're Christian people. You should be saying, um, how can I help you have this baby? Here's money, here's this, here's, they don't need you to march and tell them it's wrong. They need you to embrace them. They need you to give them alternatives. If you don't mm -hmm. want questions, give these people alternatives. Yeah. It, it's not, it, they don't need you in their face telling them whatever, you know? Yeah. And they were so unprepared. They were just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing too. A lot of this stuff goes unchallenged, you know, and, and I think that's the other problem. You know, we're, we're, um, we're so afraid to, um, to, to get involved for fear of being, you know, like I said, canceled or we're afraid of, you know, being videotaped doing something. We're just afraid to, to engage anymore, you know? Um, so I think most people just choose to just kind of lay low and let things happen around them and uh, hope it gets better. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If it does, great. That's what I mean by the, the resignation part. It's just, you know, it's a very powerful thing when people get resigned. Um, and to be honest with you again, not to sound like some conspiracy person, but complacency and re resignation is the kind of behaviors that power likes because power thrives on that, you know you know, large, large billionaires thrive on that. It's, 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 it's all consuming. It's, it's, uh, once you get people complacent, you can do almost anything, right? Proof, you need proof, look at the pandemic. You know, look at the pandemic. If, if, if people are fearful enough, if they feel like they have no control, if they feel like they're being isolated, that's what happens. Things, things get out of control. We start dividing again. You know, we have vaxxers here, the anti-vaxxers here. We have the mask people here, the anti-mask people here. And I, you know, I, my thinking during this whole pandemic was, geez, people, listen, if we can't all agree to put aside our beliefs and differences for the health and betterment of, of everyone as a whole, just for a short period of time till we can beat this thing. If we can't get together on that core issue of life and death, what can we rally around? Really, there's, there's no deeper issue than health, well-being, life and death, right? Like it, it's without any of those, without any life or health, there is nothing else. But if we can't support each other during these times of crises like this, what will it take? What? And that's the question I still can't answer. I, I always say, I don't know where the basement is on this. Meaning, I don't know how low we have to go I before we take control of all this. And that's the bold reimagining, right? If, right. if we are, if, um, if we are gonna take control and we are going to do this, what is it going to look like when we do? You know, that's a conversation that we're not having. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, what are your neighbors going to look like? If, if you could have the ideal situation for you, what does your neighbors look like? That's the question we need to ask ourselves and be willing to share the answer openly. Mm -hmm. You know, I think some people just want to live in homogeneous communities. Mm -hmm. And I think there's nothing wrong with that. You know, um, I think we have to decide that, all right, you can live however you want, but you can infringe on someone else. Right. So these are the kinds of things that we really have to talk about. Stop being manipulated. Stop watching these broadcasts. And, and, and even before this conversation, these news broadcasts, this is a big piece of the equation, right? It's education, it's media, and it's access to resources, jobs, and these things. There's a huge bottleneck on jobs. And I don't think the middle class understand how hard it is for, the, for everyone below them. We saw it during the pandemic. We saw it during COVID, you know, 
the, the people, the, the, you know, the wait staff, the people who work in the kitchens in New York City, the people who, you know, um, were uh, maintenance people in hospitals, you know, cleaning, swabbing the floors, you know, these people had no choice but to go to work every single day. And, you know, a lot of them in a lot of danger, you know, and, and um, yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's, again, it's that whole, it's that whole awareness of empathy and, and understanding that of who everyone is around you and the world doesn't revolve just around you. And it's, listen, if you want to live, you said a homogenous community, listen, if that's your thing, it's not my thing. If that's your thing, I'm okay with that. As long as you continue to make the world again, a better place, continue to, 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 um, to support people and love them. Listen. I think I think the only way, you know, people now they're they're tired and and listen, yeah. wait, wait, let me just say that I relate to what you're saying, right? It takes a lot of work to organize rallies. It takes a lot of work to be community organizer. It takes a lot of work to 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 pound the pavement, meet people, to to shake hands, talk, share your story, go here, do this, do the it takes a lot of work and I and at some point not, ev not everyone's supposed to do that work. We need people to just fund the work. Yeah, um, and, 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 and we, need to, we need to support people in that work. Again, going back to the mental health component, I don't care how passionate you are. If you're getting beaten down every day, you know, if you're out there, you know, putting 110% into what you're doing and you're just seeing no return on that. Cause that's often, you know, that from working, you know, yeah. in I feel that. still, yeah. yeah. You go to bed at night. You're like, what did I just do today? I did nothing, nothing changed. I'm the same old revolving door. Unless we, we really support people who are in that. Cause that's the problem. We, we see them out there and they're doing this visible work, but we're not thinking about the impact that it's having on them. Right. Um, we need to really be aware of um, of activism, what it means to be an activist, um, what some of the pitfalls of it are, and just be ready to pick pick like you say the baton, right? Pick up the baton when someone else can't do it for a, for a bit. You know, you have to be able to step in and, and do that as well. It's 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 a group effort. Um, yeah, it's a group effort, and I've been doing work like it for a long time now and um yeah it's it, it's a challenge i'll just say it's a challenge to keep it going for an extended period of time yeah um, no i i i feel like what i do is activism and community organizing and these things i feel like there's a general lack of support you know yeah. people people say oh that's nice what you're doing like they're like, I'm too busy, but that's nice what you're doing, mm -hmm. you know, and if you were to monetize something, they're like, oh, oh, yeah, that's great, but I'm not interested, like, it doesn't matter if you're coming or not, like this, you gotta, you, you have to just fund the work, you know, so to yeah. speak, and these kinds of things, this is, this is what's slowing down the week, you have to grease the wheels. Yeah. Yeah, nothing, nothing's for free. And um, that's one yeah, of the people that made, made the Runners United thing hard. People participating, showing up and just feeling like, like I had to like um, incentivize and, and, and like, hey, come, you know. So it's not easy and that's what you're saying, but you know, all we need, we, the allies have to, to support the allies, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah, um, absolutely, absolutely. It's, uh, we're all, again, we're all on this, <laughs> we're all on this big sinking ship together. Um, yeah, it's like, here's my lifeboat, you know, because <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it, it's hard work. Um, it's, it's, it's work that if, if you allow it to take over your life, it could be very, very dangerous and very uh, dangerous in the sense of, uh, of your yeah. own to help. Your help, yeah, yeah. I'm sure, for yeah, sure. It's it, the, the world. The world is a scare, big, scary, bad place at times, right? And um, and it can seem like a, this giant monster you can't tame. It's uh, 
So yeah, it's again, that's why I say take tackle, take on what you can take on. All right. Uh, if you can't make it to that rally or, or go march on Washington, fine. We understand. Do something in your neighborhood. Go to the soup kitchen, right? And serve meals for a night. You know, whatever you, whatever contribution you have, make that contribution. If enough people do it, enough people are inspired by what you're doing and it starts spreading, you know, eventually we're going to get this back on track. We're never going to live in a perfect union. We're never going to live, no, there's no place on earth that's perfect. But, um, but we have got to get a lot closer to perfect than we are right now. Uh, we're, you know, <laughs> we are nowhere near it right now. And I, 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 always, I always caution people, I said, don't fall for the, don't fall for all the rah-rah, things are great, you know, uh, cheerleading in this country. That's not true for most people in this country. You're talking to the wrong people if you're saying everything in this country is doing really well. You're talking to the wrong people. Yep. And that's, you know, that's why it's important to make sure you get outside your bubble. And this is for all of us, me included. You know, I live in New York City, right? You live in Princeton. I can't think of two more liberal, you know, bubbly places than, than, than these two places, right? You know, how many times have I ever spoken to a farmer out in the Midwest? Never. I've never spoken to a farmer in the Midwest. I have no idea what their life is like. You know, I have no clue. So I think I think it's kind of going beyond our, our comfortable boxes and getting to know people. And then you can walk away and say, wow, you know, I I don't agree with that farmer about his political. I don't I don't agree with him. But man, his life story is that's one tough life. And I understand why he feels the way he does. And now the next time I hear someone say they support something or don't support something, I'll get it. Like I'll understand it now because I've had the, I've had the opportunity to hear them and, and hear them out, you know, and not just read about what people think they are or what they what I thought they said, you know, it's what they actually told me, you know. Um, let me let me ask you something unrelated or somewhat related. Um, what did you? Did you always know you were gay or was there like a, at some point you realized it or? Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a complicated question because, um, because it involves like, you know, childhood in terms of like the way you behave as a child and it's all hindsight. It's like, boy, you know, while I was living, while I was a child, I never realized what I was thinking or doing. But now that I look back on it, boy, that was like a big red flag. Like that, I should have realized it way back then, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, do you have anything like that? Yes, I do. So, I, I mean, just I would say, uh, looking back in hindsight, I probably can remember back as young as five or six. Um, you know. Um, thinking a certain way, not, nothing sexual, of course, because five or six, it's just, but. Um, like, I want to cook? Like, what do you mean? No, it had to, it's, it usually had to, yeah, no, it's, it, it's, it's funny. I can't even put it into words. I, I can't even explain it. Um, yeah, it's tough to explain. It's a kind of like, it has a lived experience kind of a thing. So at, at what point did you I, like what point did you start to pick up on these trends? <laughs> yeah, you should. I, I mean, like, geez, Mark, how long did it take you? Gee, um, no, I mean, everyone has yeah, a different no, no. story, right? Yeah, no, no, I, I know what you mean. It, it, it's interesting. Um, the internet definitely played a huge role, and I now I'm old enough to remember when the uh, when uh, America Online started around the mid '90s, and that was the big thing. Like, you know, you sign on AOL. And there would be all these different groups and chat groups and all that kind of stuff. And I started to like look at some chat groups and th there wasn't anything, you know, pornographic. It was just, you know, people talking. And um, I learned there was a whole segment of people like uh, men who were married and were, you know, closeted gay men. And I was like, wow, that's fascinating. Like that's kind of like how I feel, right? And I eventually started thinking about it more and more. Um, but yeah, look, going back in my life, when I was growing up, there was no room for, 
sort of like your Jamaica experience. There was there was no room for expression or discussion about these things. You just kind of like just kind of like buried it. And yeah. So you kind of, you're kind of saying that you you weren't consciously suppressing it. There just wasn't the space for right. it. Yeah. There just wasn't then, a place that, yeah. As you as you started to did you feel like when you got married, did you feel like you were in love or? Yes. So I absolutely, yeah. I absolutely I, was. Like you, we all know there's stories of like couples who like, I was in love and this and that, you know, there's, everyone's different. Yeah. People, people ask me that question all the time. And I got to tell you, when I, when I got married, I walked down the aisle. I was the happiest person on the face of the earth. I absolutely was in love and to me, it was the right choice. I don't regret it at all. Um, Did you stop being in love, or was it like a while being in love, you felt there was something you were missing yeah, something? That 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 was the case. Yeah, for sure. It's it just it's just that that nagging feeling that that something's off, something's not right. I, I'm I'm more attracted to this person than I am this person. Uh, I mean, eventually you put all the pieces together. This is my story. Not not now. There are people who. From Everybody early on, they know, and they there's no doubt, and yeah, but that's that was not my story. Um, and uh, it was it was funny. I, I went to a um, I went to a married men's group. Um, boy, let's see what year was this? It would be 19. Oh my god, no, wait a second, it would be 2000. And what year? I gotta get my years all straight here. Um, 2005, 2006. I went to a married men's group in New York City. It was so clandestine, meaning the only way you could find out about it is you have to know the right person who gave you the right address. It was not publicized for obvious reasons because men could not be outed accidentally or otherwise. So I walked in, I walked, went into Manhattan. It was like in this church. It was like a church, old church building or whatever. And I walked in there. It's like, what am I doing here? And I went in there and there was men like just like me. Like they were all in, like there was. 67 70 year old men they were 20 year old men there was a guy from who just moved to new york from texas he had just gotten married he was 25 and he's realizing that he's gay so i i met all these fascinating people and heard all their stories um and everyone was at a different stage like you know some people were like they had kids grandkids some people right. were like I, we have no kids and i went to these meetings for quite a quite a long time and um after a while, I, I decided for myself, and a couple of guys inspired me, but I, I decided for myself that I can't keep on coming to these meetings and not do anything. I have to be a person of action, right? So I made the decision, a very hard decision to change my life and, and, and leave my marriage and move away and start anew, you know? And it was hard, but I did, I did it. And um, I know for a fact that there are guys from that group who are still married to this day. Their choice and their life, and I respect every decision that, that they make, uh, was, just wasn't right for me. But that's a, that's a really it, tough question, though, about looking back on your life. It's, it's, it's a hard question. It's complicated because there's, there's all of these societal expectations. There's you know, all of the normalcies of what the church told you and what your right. parents told you, and, uh, right. you know, and then you have just this, you know, you, you're staying true to that inner voice right. and going with that. And, and I think you're, you're kind of saying something that if, if, if there's no space for that inner voice to exist, if that inner voice has been suppressed, you can't, it's possible that you can't even hear it. It's very possible, and I and and it's it's amazing what the mind can do. I, I know there, are, you know, you often hear stories about um, people who have suffered like sexual abuse, right? And one of the questions that people always ask is, "How could you not remember that? Like, how could how could you?" It's easy. Your mind has an amazing way of coping and 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 suppressing and keep and anything could bring it out again and trigger it, the memory or the, or the thing. So when you ask me that question, did I always know, um, looking back? Yes. If I reviewed my whole life and looked for more like signposts, 
Absolutely. While I was in them, no. Was not even, you know, I grew up on Long Island, you know, I dated girls in high school. My best friend and I, who turned out to be gay, both dated girls in high school. You know, we never talked about anything like this. It wasn't a conversation we had with teachers or even you could get your parents. But you wouldn't even talk about it with your friends. Um, there was no internet to make you feel like you were part of a larger community. You just knew what you knew. So in many respects, today's young people have huge advantages because they are exposed a lot earlier. They have a lot more resources. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm just saying that they definitely have more of a support system than I could have ever had growing up. Um, and again, going back to the, the conversation we had earlier, you know, men have a certain expectation of what it means to be a man, right? And to many men, being gay does not fit into that, into that, um, that mold. You know, it, it, the two can exist side by side. I, I believe they can, but a lot of people believe they can't, you know, and um, so that also keeps you kind of at bay. You know, I, um, the thing, the thing, most important thing about my experience and the experience of other people that I've spoken to, there's no right or wrong. There's no too late or too early. You know, there's no right way or wrong way. I always say the only way that's wrong is for someone else to make the decision for you, someone right. else to force you into this exposure that now you have to answer for it, right? It's, it, it's got to be something that you do on your own time. It may be painfully slow to you and to others who know you, right? You may be like, oh my God, when is this person just going to come out of it, right? But that timeline is very important to the individual. You have to be able to embrace it because if you're not ready to um again it's like anything else it could have severe mental health ramifications if you're not ready to handle the fallout from it not everyone is as fortunate as i was i had people who loved me and supported me that is not you know this from covenant house that is not the case for a lot of young yeah, people absolutely very dangerous in fact um very dangerous they could be beaten killed you know, trans people are, you know, thrown out in the street often. Did you, did you and your wife talk about kids? Um, yeah, well, I knew, I, well, I knew right from the get go that, well, she already, she had two kids already. And so I was a step parent for all those years that I was married. I, I knew from the get go that she wasn't having any more children. Um, I was okay with that. Did, before getting married, did you want kids? Um, I didn't really think about it. I really didn't think about it. It, it wasn't something that was on the front of my mind. Um, cause I got married at 28. So I wasn't really thinking about it in my twenties. Again, I was out on wall street. I was making, I was starting out in radio. I was just thinking about my career. I didn't really think about it. And I admittedly, I've wavered on that topic as an adult often. You know, I think about legacy. I think about, you know, all that stuff. But um, we talked about, yes, it was no secret. And I knew I wasn't going to have children with her. And I think on, on some very like subliminal level, I kind of was probably relieved by that, right? Because I think making that dramatic switch in my life at age 40 with children involved would have been a lot more difficult. I mean, a lot more difficult. I know that because I have a friend who went to the same journey as I did. He had two sons. And um, he had a whole set of circumstances that I did not have to worry about, right? So I guess, yeah, I, I don't, again, I don't regret anything in my life. I, I, um, I always felt like I was operating with honesty. And I know that sounds weird to say that because some people would look at my life and say, you weren't honest. You weren't honest with yourself, your wife. But I, what I mean by that is I always, operate out of a place of love. I, I never did anything intentionally to, to hurt someone else. Right. You know, I, um, now, did I hurt other? Yes. I mean, it was, it was painful process, but um, I always operate out of a place of authenticity in, in the sense that I always loved and I always wanted to do what I was doing. 
so yeah it's um it's i don't know it's just um i look back on it and i i still can't believe it's half the things that i did in my life but it is the life that i have and i you know i'm glad that i'm i'm where i am now and um yeah i wouldn't change anything i wouldn't even people ask me all the time would would you want to go back and be open your whole life no i no it's i hate going back questions if you could yeah do yeah it. yeah because then then you get into if then you get into if i go back then i don't have the people i love now yeah you know what I mean? like, they can't go it's a weird can't... question it's it's you know sometimes you can just kind of think about it talk about it but it, it, it's a weird question because if you could go back question you know then you knew what you knew now it would be completely different and it'd be yeah. this kind of weird thing and yeah, yeah. It, um, it, it is but no i i don't i don't play those games either I, I i just don't i i believe that everything i learned in the process helps me today um you know and again it, it goes back to what we talked about what the struggle right the oppression the struggle it's uh, i have a very in, i have a very deep understanding of what that means um not because it necessarily happened to me, but I know what that feels like to fear it. Like I know, I know even today that there are places in this country, in this world, where if I walk down the street with my husband hand in hand, I could be killed. And that's a reality that I have to think about constantly, you know, or maybe not that dramatic. I, I can be walking around New York City at a, outside a bar, a gay bar, and Someone doesn't like that fact that I'm doing that. And look at Orlando. Yeah, right. Exactly. Right. There's hate everywhere, you know. So I totally understand what that feels like, and um, it's still very real for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah. We just have to. We have. That's why we have to make this world a welcoming, loving place for everyone. It, it's it, ultimately it's just going to lead to a better humanity, and. Um, yeah, that's all we want. Treat us with respect and love, and we'll return the favor. I guarantee you, right? Yeah, you, I mean, you you can't be free until everyone's free. That's it. Yeah. And the re, when when people are free, they bring their full expression of self right. and love and joy, and you want that for other people so that you can have that for yourself. Absolutely. We, we all want to live there. And the message is getting convoluted and people are confused. Yeah. Um, they're not able to see the simplicity. Just let people be. You be you, I be me. We you, you know, you don't have you don't you don't have to approve of me. I don't have to approve of you. I'll be over here, you be over there. You know, there's no need for you to comment on what someone else is doing right and i i you know it's interesting right if i if i want to eat brussels sprouts you know my kids are like sees me <laughs> eating brussels sprouts they're like ew i love I'm brussels like, sprouts. yeah i'm like why are you worried about what i'm eating right exactly I'm eating brussels sprouts i'm <laughs> eating brussels sprouts don't worry yeah. about it <laughs> and exactly. just the idea that someone's eating brussels sprouts upsets people so we have yeah. to be able to put our own because it's it's just a natural reaction when yeah. i see you eating brussels sprouts somewhere in my mind i imagine that i'm eating brussels sprouts <laughs> yeah exactly and it's like i don't want to see you and your brussels sprouts so i think people have to have safe spaces that's away yeah. from people and people need to know i don't want to see people eating brussels sprouts so I don't go to where that is. Right. And that's like, the same thing. Like I'm saying, people want homogeneous spaces. So yeah. I, I think that's a part of the solution here. You know, America is an experiment. They they threw us all in this barrel and, <laughs> yeah. and give us all these mixed messages. And we're too close to New York City. We're on top of each other, you know. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you're uncomfortable with gays, you need to leave New York City. That's yeah. my opinion. If you're yeah. uncomfortable with Blacks and Mexicans, you need to leave New York City. Yeah. But the question is, we need to have a space for these people to go, where they right. can go live with white picket fences 
away from all the others and just you know live yeah. that leave it to beaver life is what yeah i mean whatever it. whatever floats your boat again as long as as long as it doesn't infringe on i always like the expression you know, your rights end where mine begin right and and that's it i mean don't 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 cross over into my territory with rights all right what you, you can meet me here but that's it if you go over that now you're messing up my my groove right so um yeah it, Mark, it's, it's still real. It's still real because yeah, you still have people making sideways comments. I you know. still have athletes who gotta hide it. You still have entertainers who's so it's still a real thing. And people yeah. want to say, well, they can get married now. It's better. It's still a real thing. People are still hiding and killing themselves. And yeah. it's still real. It's very real. And it's very, very real. And I can tell you it's real. I, I, the, the young people that we work with will tell you stories um, about what's real. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it shouldn't be this way, but it is this way. And um, more safe spaces. Yeah. More yeah. safe spaces. And, and more open conversation. The more, you, the more you're able to express and more you're able to talk to people and yeah and and all that i i think really really helps it's um i again you i think you said before you wish you had something i forget what you said you wish you had a mentor when you were growing up and i wish that i had i wish i had a strong role model a lgbtq role model who could have helped me navigate those waters you know but that was not my reality so yeah i'm one of the lucky ones but not everyone is as fortunate as, as i am you know so, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, see, you got me thinking about changing my perspective, like like um, putting LGBT characters in Disney movies. Mm -hmm. Like it's a thing now. I know. It's a, it's a very controversial thing. It's, um, you know, I, I'll say this. And this, I, I may be, I may be in the minority on this, but... I sometimes have an issue with too much of a good thing, meaning, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know how necessary it is for, for my community to be represented in every single thing. I do believe that, I do believe that one of the problems growing up was that I didn't see representation of me anywhere you know, on TV, commercials, whatever. Now it's almost like I'm, it's too much for me um, without a real substance to it. Mm. That's the key. I like inclusion of things as long as it has a purpose and a reason and it's part of something really amazingly creative, right? Not just thrown in there as a side note, because now we've met our, you know, our gay quota for this film, you know, I, that I'm not interested in that. You know, I, I, I'd rather be really, really uh, meaningful. Yeah. yeah. And I think um, I, I do see a lot of this bending over and going crazy and, and, and just trying so hard to be woke and inclusive in every facet of our society and um it, it, it for me it could be overbearing can you imagine like i i should be the biggest supporter of it but i'm actually overwhelmed by it at times i you know I, it's, for me it's not an issue so much of being in a kids programming or adult program for me it's just it's just it almost cheapens the experience so how do you feel like when Pride Month comes and all of these big brands start making rainbow apparel and, and yeah. rainbow merchandise and stuff oh, like that? I have very strong opinions on, on uh, corporate sponsorship in general. Uh, case in point, the Staples Center in California is about to become crypto.com center. I mean, that's a true story. I'm not making that up. Uh, these the naming of corporate things and, and the use of corporate money to support things I, I have I have a big issue with. Um, in, in in for the pride events, um, one of the biggest complaints, and I agree, has been that um, the, the whole the whole thing has been watered down so much. 
that it's lost its core essence of what it really means to be gay. Like that you mentioned Stonewall, it really loses all of that history and all of that um, outsider status kind of, you know, fighting for equality kind of uh, movement and just turns into another theme park and another corporate, you know, the floats coming by with, you know, yeah, I, 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 I'm not a big fan of corporate involvement in, in, in anything, quite honestly. I worked um, at, at TD Bank and there was like a TD Bank float and yeah, yeah. they were like, I don't even remember if they were a sponsor, but there was like a huge involvement and it, it's, I, I, I can see that. It just becomes another theme park, another, another you know, it, it's just, yeah, I, I know why it's done. I just, I, I'm not naive. I know why it's done. You know, that's what supports these programs and, and parades and floats and big splashy events. Um, but again, instead of like going down the avenue and these big colorful, great floats with, you know, topless guys, whatever, imagine if these parades and gatherings really meant something. They really affected some kind of, change or some kind of um yeah you know i i have i have an issue with that I, I don't go to, i don't go to I, yeah i don't go to pride events the only one i went to was the uh was the 50th um last year what two years two years ago mm -hmm. two years ago yeah. i did go to that one i went to it as part of my job and we all marched together and i had a good time don't get me wrong but i don't go i don't go to i don't go to events like that i, I generally Try to you don't anything. feel the intentionality is there. Yeah, and I just, it, yeah, I don't it feel more of a hoopla than an intentionality to just yeah. celebrate and educate and. Right. Right. I, I would, yeah, I would, I would rather sit down with a group of young, like you say, I used to work, with, I, I'd rather stand with a group of young people and have deep conversations about what their lives are like and, and how they can make their lives better and what kind of support they need it's a real to, pride celebration so that's a real that's real pride that's real um movement that's real results you know parades are nice and i understand they're they're celebratory and they're fun and they celebrate but you know freedom. i mean let's be honest like the bars are are selling and you know the merchandise is selling are you is are you saying money that money is going to programs did you say that <laughs> no probably not no, probably uh, not. I like, mean, yeah. you know, no, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's um, like everything in this country, unfortunately, and the world. Um, Just another selling day. Co yeah, corporate greed takes over, you know, money takes over. Again, I just gave the example of the Staples Center. We have another one here in New York. You know, it's the naming of like the Tappan Zee Bridge. Should, should it be Tappan Zee Bridge? Should it be the Mario Cuomo Bridge? You know, it's like, there's, there's this historical context to all this stuff, right? And names that mean something. And then we switch them to something that not necessarily is done with the most genuine of reasons, right? Um, so and, yeah. And, and that, that, that adds to the watering down yeah. of, of society. And, and Absolutely. we're definitely heading to like a watering down and with yeah. all the polarization and the media. And like yeah. you said, people are checked out and now the parade yeah. is this kind of thing and they're selling me this. And you, after yeah. a while, you're just like, I don't even know what's up or down. Just, just yeah, take no. my money and leave me alone. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, you know, it's, um, I, I don't know if it's inevitable. I don't know if it's always going to be this way, but that's the direction that we're going in. It, it's this, uh, it's this um, this money's tied to everything, whether it's politics, whether it's uh, parades, I, you know. I'd say the revolution's coming. And I hope so. When 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 I when I start to do research on revolution, one of the things I read is revolutions are bloody, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, not yeah. that kind of revolution. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't. I I don't. So to my mind, when I when I do my research, the word revolution is tied to bloody. So I don't want that kind of revolution. I don't right. know, if, you know. But I think at some point, people are gonna say enough's enough. Yeah. You know, 
Yeah, I hope so. You can't give a 10 year old a cell phone and just let them loose on social media or a 15 year old. You can't, it's yeah. unhealthy. And the yeah. research is there. The device eats your brain. It, it, it prevents you from sleeping. It leads to anxiety. Like we know it now. We know it. And, and if, you give, if you give professionals email devices, it's gonna ding in the middle of the night. And you know, at 8 a.m. it says, why didn't you respond? And it's like, it's, it's getting to this kind of place. Like no one's able to escape this kind of thing. Yeah, we're, we're all on autopilot. It's like, I always like to say, we're just totally on autopilot now. We don't even know what's happening. We should know what's happening, but we don't even know what's happening. It's just happening. It's on, on a certain level. And then you look back, you look at your day, you're like, wow, how much time did I spend on that thing today, right? Yeah, it, it's, uh, we, we, we've got to grab, we, there's a whole bunch of work that we all have to do personally in our own lives and what, you know, on a wider scale with the people around us and the world around us, you know, I like what you said before. I really like what you, you said, um, what was the phrase that you, you used to describe how we have to change? Oh, um, a bold reimagining. Bold reimagining, yeah. We have to throw out the script. We have to throw out everything that came before. And, and, um, it's uncomfortable. It's totally this is, uncomfortable. No this one is uncomfortable. You no know, one if you're, if you have money invested in the stock market, this bold reimagining is not good for your investments. Exactly. So they're it's like, not, Whoa, wait, wait a minute. It's not good for a lot of things. Trust me. It's not bold reimagining is not going to make a lot, some people happy. Right. So it's <laughs> uncomfortable. It's going to interrupt your money. You know, it's, it's prioritizing people over the money. Yeah. You know, it's exactly. going to be a political disruption. It has, it, it, to me, it's inevitable. Yeah. You can only bankrupt people for so long before right. it gets to a point of like, are we going to just roll over or are we going to do something? And at some point, someone's going to do something. I hope so. So, you know, I don't know what it's going to look like. And I try to be positive. Let's, let's end on a positive note. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, I, think, I think we've stayed pretty positive the whole time. But listen, at this, um, but at this point, most people don't see this positive. They don't see it. No, it's and, to... and we're just kind of like, well, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm just trying to survive today. And most of us are just trying to survive the day, not yep. seeing any, we're not, you know, putting in a, the groundwork to build anything. And we think bold reimagining is never going to happen. There's nothing out there that's going to like disrupt this thing. There's no hope for us. We're just kind of like, just keep your head down, pay your bills and do you, like you said, you know, and that's it. Yeah. So that's, that's what, that, See what happens. The, yeah, the, the ending on a positive note is engage in real community, log off, you know, use, use the devices for conversations like this, for connecting, but don't let it be the majority of your day, restrict right. it, limit it and be conscious and intentional when you do use it and go meet people have conversations and yes it's going to be uncomfortable yes it's going to be awkward but that you have to prioritize that and be empathetic listen with empathy that's what i always you, say. you have to start talking first and then when you realize it's awkward use the empathy yeah exactly yeah because it's going to be awkward sometimes it, it always is Change is always awkward, you know? And if someone approaches you trying to connect, be open to it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's see, you know, yeah. I hope. Yeah, let's end with that, Mark. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Oh, Lexi, it's been great, man. I tell you, this is, um, I, feel, I feel like a brain drain. It feels like I've gotten everything out of <laughs> You gotta let it out, you know. <laughs> what still freaks me out is everyone's feeling the same exact yeah. thing. Yeah, that's the common humanity. That's what freaks me out. So when I go humanity. to someone with something, I expect them to just kind of cut through it all and just be like, yeah, man, 
we're real people in real time. He yeah. walked up to me and, you know, and people are still, because you're on a device so long, you're like, oh, wait, this is a real person talking to me. Uh, yeah. How do yeah. I interact again? And the exactly. pandemic took that, you know. So yeah, we got to break this. It's a trance. That was one of the words <laughs> that one of my previous guests used, that these things put you in a trance. Yep. It's a and you get hypnotized and you can't just, it's hard to get out. It is very hard. It's, uh, I, I've even tried to do like week free, you know, Facebook free Fridays or Facebook free weeks. And that's even hard. And I, I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm in deep. I have really got to work on this, you know? But I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a work in progress. I st all of us are. And yeah, I, you never, you're never too old to learn. You're never too old to change, right? So, yeah. Thank you, Mark, for the vulnerability. Thank oh, you for thank sharing. You. Thank you for the time. Um, oh, sure. I'll be reaching out and we'll yeah, do I look forward to our little powwows together. I'm in Princeton or New York, whatever. You know, maybe uh, we'll run, be running the marathon together. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see what happens. My best bet for New York, um, you know, 2022 is the lottery. So I'm going to yeah. put it for that. Yeah. And yeah. if I get that, that's my best bet. I don't think yeah. I could raise 2,500 bucks. You could. You could. I mean, I did it, I did it twice. I, I it's wrote stressful. I raised, it is. It is very stressful, but I managed to raise it both years. I did it. 13 and 14 people, people gravitate towards your story. Yeah. They tend to want to support, but I understand it's, it's not for the faint of heart. It's, it's yeah. uh, yeah, no. Yeah. All right. Thank you so All right. much. Appreciate you. Great talking.